Will you expect an appeals now? Do you think that the board will go back and just try to restructure some sort of payment for Elon? Wouldn't surprise me at all if we saw an appeal. Uh, under Delaware practice, there is a direct appeal to the Delaware Supreme Court, which is the final word on matters like this. So it's likely there will be an appeal. And Max, from Elon Inc., your expertise of all things. I mean, he has been avidly against Delaware more broadly. He, clearly, there has been concerns about, from Elon himself, a lack of control of his own company now. What do you think happens after this paper? I mean, this is a huge development, not just because of the amount of money that is at stake in these options, the value of the options. I've seen, you know, figures as high as 50 billion reported. Of course, he hasn't exercised them yet. Um, but also because this kind of throws not just Tesla into chaos. They have to figure out a way to try to retain Elon Musk. He's already been sort of making these kind of veiled threats that he might be doing AI research outside of the company if he doesn't get a bigger pay package. Um, and then at the same time, you have all his other companies, which of course depend on his financing. And we remember one of the uh, kind of uh, one of the reasons he wanted all this money supposedly was to pay for his, you know, Mars exploration. So you have to ask where every where all of this goes. Last thing I'll say is this is another big loss on Delaware. Remember, Delaware forced him to buy yeah. uh, Twitter for forty-four billion dollars. So now, even for the world's richest man, forty-four billion, fifty billion—that's starting to add up. <laughs> Uh, Greg, good morning. It's Ed in, in San Francisco. As far as I can tell, you and your clients are the only ones to actually ever take a look at the compensation package. So as a starting point, Greg, what was it in the first place that, that worried you or, or that you thought was unusual about the package that caused you and your clients to look? You know, I, I have to say that I have a hard time articulating $55 billion dollars I often misspeak and say $55 million. $55 billion is such a large pay package that it basically skewed dramatically upward the entire data set for the compensation consulting industry. Um, <laughs> I think we put out a press release yesterday referring to it as a gargantuan uh, package. Um, let me start by saying it was so large that we looked at it specifically because no one had ever tried to come this close. And oh, by the way, when you look at the nearest comparable, it's Elon's prior pay package. Okay, but Greg, here's the thing. It may be the biggest compensation package in history, but there are a really large body of, of Tesla investors out there that say, so what? 73% of those investors voted in favor of the package in 2018 when it was awarded. And there is a big body of people out there, Greg, I hope you don't mind me saying, that are pretty mad at you and your client who are Tesla shareholders because they say, look at the share performance of Tesla since that package was awarded. Look at Tesla's position as the market incumbent in EVs and their growth globally in other products. Why does it matter? Well, you know... Um there's this idea in efficient capital markets that shareholders ought to have a say in things like this, and this package was, in fact, put to shareholders. But it was put to shareholders on a proxy that the court found to be materially misleading in several respects. And look, the bottom line is capital markets don't work if you don't tell stockholders material facts when asking them to take action. And that's exactly what happened here. Max. This puts into question the board in particular. The accusations from many an investor is that there is no pushback. The judge articulated there was at no point any sort of questioning that this pay package was ever perhaps excessive. What does it mean for the board of Tesla? Well, it's not clear to me. Uh, you know, it's, it's, as Ed is kind of hinting at, many Tesla shareholders were aware that the Tesla board of directors was essentially a, a rubber stamp, right? You have a lot of people who are uh, very close friends with Elon, and, and I think one of the reasons he lost this case is because you had nominally independent directors who were going on vacation with him and we had clear, clearly had uh, a close relationship with. Now, that's kind of like how Elon Musk has done business. And, and by Elon, what's, what's so, I think, difficult about this going forward um, is that that's kind of been, if you asked Elon Musk, like, what is your playbook? How have you been able to achieve so much? He would say, well, it's because I have a, you know, I've been able to do essentially whatever I want to do. And, and again, as I said earlier, he's been asking for even more control from where he got. So, so I don't know where that goes. I do think there is some 
piece of risk that probably didn't exist yesterday that Elon Musk could either threaten to or even, and again, I think this is a far off possibility, decide to walk away from Tesla. I mean, this is why the share price is somewhat under pressure, not massive moves, Greg, but the, the articulation from the judge was, at no point did it seem that this 55 billion or these options awarded was necessary to keep Elon motivated. But then, to that end, why not recompense the leader, a founder, with such a significant upside if he's going to deliver for shareholders? Well, the judge made the point, I think, very cogently, and that is, I believe his net worth increased in increments of $10 billion based on the stock he already held without this pay package for each increment that was identified in this pay package. And so I think the judge's point of view was, if you look at other uh, successful founders, Bezos, uh, Zuckerberg, others, they don't take pay packages or they don't take any material pay package. They rely on driving value for their shareholders in their own underlying stock. Uh, Mr. Musk had the opportunity to, to increase his net worth by almost $100 billion. I have to stop and make sure I get the B right. $100 billion if he accomplished what he set out to accomplish under this pay package without getting a single option. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is a car company. It's not a space exploration company. And it's a public company. And public companies live by different rules than private companies. Right. If you're, uh, if you're watching us live now on Bloomberg Television and you're a terminal subscriber, you can send questions to us via IB. Greg, I, I told our audience on social media you were coming on and that there were lots of questions. I think the most common is, is just a want for deeper understanding of what the pathway forward is. So you talked with Caroline about a, a likely appeal. I think my understanding from sources is that's likely as well. But the other thing is that this current board, which is different to what it was in 2018, could put together a new compensation plan and then take it to, to shareholders to, to be ratified. How involved do you think you will be with your client? How involved do you think uh, Kathleen uh, J. McCormick will be in that process, if at all? Well, um, the simple answer to that is that's a question for the board to determine in the first instance. And assuming it fulfills its fiduciary duties and uses uh, ordinary and reasonable means to arrive at a result, my guess is I won't be involved at all. And my guess as well is the judge won't be involved at all. If the board comes out with a package which uh, either facially is ridiculous, gargantuan, or otherwise uh, raises concerns uh, from a fiduciary perspective, I suspect you'll see my firm and I uh, involved as well. Right, Max, there's so much to discuss here. I guess the board could also say, well, here's another $55 billion package. Looks yeah. different, same number. I mean, one thing I'm curious about, you know, Musk overnight was sort of threatening to leave Delaware and to reincorporate in uh, Texas, I believe, or, you know, I think X, uh, he moved from uh, Delaware to Nevada. Um, is that a re is that, can he do that? And, and is that like, like, will there be another uh, sort of, le you know, tranche of lawsuits if it happens? Because shareholders would say, oh, he's, he's just doing this to, to reduce our rights or something. So look, the simple answer to that is Musk can't do anything himself. That's a matter that the board has to decide in the first instance, and then it's presented to shareholders for a vote. If shareholders, upon the board's recommendation, decide to move to Nevada, they have a right to do that. But it's not a Musk decision. Let me also say that I'm not an expert in all 50 states' laws, but I suspect, I, guess, I would guess, that even Nevada prohibits you from putting out misleading proxy statements. And that if Musk wants to go to Nevada and do the same thing, he's probably going to run into some, some problems there as well. It's this little idea of telling the truth. You know, it's, it's real basic. Right. <laughs> uh, hey, Greg, real quick, an audience question that I'm just going to read. Do you worry about changing the norms around Delaware corporate law away from non-intervention? That was a follow-on from what Max asked. We have about 30 seconds. No, uh, not at all. I think it's very important to recognize, and, and this is something that's deeply embedded in Delaware law, that every decision uh, is twice tested, both from a legal perspective and an equitable perspective. And when fiduciaries act in a way that's not equitable or in violation of their duties, um, you're squarely within the long tradition of the Delaware law to call them on that.